Welcome back to another bonus episode of the Sports Talk ATL Pod. I'm Chase Durrell, joined by Jake Gordon and Alex Lord at Can't Guard Jake on Twitter and at Go Sports Talk on Twitter. I'm at Sports Talk ATL on Twitter. Guys, the NBA, it seems like we're going to a quiet offseason. And then within seconds, shit hits the fan. KD, I want out. Kyrie, after opting in, he wants out. And Jake, we were just talking about this before we got on the pod. And it's something that's really got me heated up because KD goes, Oh, I'm going to go, I want to get traded to the Suns or the Sixers, or the Heat, like the three best teams in the NBA. And then there's like reports out there like, yeah, it would look be a really bad look for, for the, the owner to trade him to a team that he didn't want to get traded to, even though KD has four years on his deal. So instead of getting the best deal possible, they're going to, you know, pander to KD, KD, who's kind of trying to ruin their franchise. And it just blows my mind how these players have the owners by the balls. Like they literally have them by the balls. And it's like, yeah, dude, and it just makes no sense to me. Like take back some control. This guy has four years left on his contract. Send him to OKC. Give me SGA, whatever SGA, strip their roster down. Give me all their first round picks and rebuild from the top up. Give me Ben Simmons, SGA, send Kevin Durant, let him rot in the desert, dude. It it doesn't make any sense to me why these guys pander to athletes who are trying to ruin their franchise. It makes no sense. Like, why would he send them to Phoenix? Why would you send them to Philly? Why would you not take the best offer, which is going to be from a team like OKC, who has like eight first round picks? My thing is too, like, okay, let's say you do want to go to Phoenix and Phoenix can offer this, the Nets like a decent package. They can send them Bridges, Aiton, Cam Johnson, couple picks, couple pick swaps. That's a good return. But the fact that you come out and say, I want to go to the Suns and I have the leverage here, you're holding up the process. Like it's just going to take longer for a deal to get done because now the Suns are going to try to lowball. So that never makes sense to me when they come out and say, oh, this is where I want to go. Why? Why would you tell anybody that? You're ruining, you're you're giving up leverage and you're elongating these negotiations. I saw uh, the Nets owner say something about how he would rather, you know, win 50 or 40 games uh, with guys who wanted to be there than win 60 games and go through what they went through last year. And there's some validity to that statement. If I'm an owner, I don't want anyone who doesn't want to be on my team. Like, if I didn't want to work for Sports Talk, I mean, you would fire me right on the spot. You'd be like, all right, get out of here. Like, I want people in the building who want to be in the building. So there is something to that. Well, and that's why I'm interested to see. Like, now you have him saying that. So is he going to send them to whoever KD wants to? Because, listen, what I'm saying is, when are the Nets going to have another chance to attract a star? I mean, after this show, it's probably not going to be four or five years down the road. And are four or five years the stars who are not going to be the stars of today? Are they going to be like, oh, remember how they handled that KD situation? They sent him to OKC and tried to get the best package instead of send him to the team they want. I mean, that makes no sense. If I'm a player and I'm interested in going to Brooklyn, I want an owner who's focused on winning. He's not interested in pandering to stars who don't want to be there. It makes absolutely no sense. And this has been going on on in the NBA for years. I mean, for the last 10 decade plus guys just like, Oh, I don't want to be here. Send them, send me to where I want to be like, no, I'm going to send you to OKC where I can get the best trade package. Have fun in the desert, buddy. Like I just do not understand where these players got all this leverage from. And I know you need stars. I know NBA free agency is so big, but I really don't think in four or five years down the road, people are going to be thinking, Oh, remember how they handled that KD situation? They went and got the best trade package. Don't want to go there. Don't want to go there. Don't want to go to a guy that's trying to win. That makes no damn sense. See, More that's so than the thing any too league. Is, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Well, that's the, that's my thing too, is like, you think about it, like, do you want to go to an organization that just has no direction like that? I want to go play for somebody like an Eric Spolstra, somebody who, who runs that place like the Navy, like, Eric Spolster's not having that. Like, I want to go to an organization with some direction, somewhere where they win. I feel like places that do that, like, if you're just bending over backwards for guys like this, and I mean, we see John Collins say that he wants out, and obviously he's not Kevin, you know, saying, okay, well, like, where do you want to go? We're going to make sure this works for you. No, he's like, all right, everybody give me your offers, and I'm going to make a decision that's what's best for the Hawks. More so than any other league. I mean, this is just like you said, Chase. It's been like this for a decade. The stars run the NBA. The owners don't have any power. It's those, you know, 15 stars, those superstars who just run the league pretty much. And it's always been like that uh, for most of my life. Uh, but with that being said, I mean, I would take KD in Atlanta in a heartbeat. And I don't think, I don't think anyone's against it. Uh, you know, it's difficult to, you know, deal with all that stuff that we're seeing right now that it could potentially happen to the Hawks where he goes, I'm not playing for the Hawks. Like I, I, I don't want to play here. You know, I want some 
some players, you know, proven commodities. I'm sure he's looking at the Suns and the Heat, and, you know, he's like, those are my best chances of winning a title, and that's what I want to do. So it makes sense uh, in that in that case. But it is a rat thing to do. Just be like, not, two, two first seeds. I don't think there's any team that isn't the Nets that is out there saying, I wouldn't trade for Kevin Durant. Like, every team should be giving their best trade package and hope it works. That's not my point at all. You know, he is amazing. My point is, I want to see an owner take a stand and say, I'm not trading you to where you want to be traded. Like Kevin Durant should have no leverage in this situation. He has four years left on his contract. The Nets should be evaluating every trade offer, whether it's the Kings, whether it's the Thunder, whether it's the Pacers, whether it's the Bulls. I don't care where he wants to be traded and take the best offer. I want to see an owner take a stand, like really just take a stand and say, hey, no, you're not going to just bully us around. Like that's not our organization. And I don't understand why owners are so afraid to do that. They're so they're petrified that if they do this to a guy like Kevin Durant, no one else will want to come. And I don't think that's true. I do not think that's true. I would love to see an owner do it. I'd love to see what happens. And but besides, if they did trade him to, to Oklahoma City and they got SGA back and they got a bunch of lottery picks, they're probably it would in a be better a good situation. Team. They don't they do not even need another star to come there. So it just it blows my mind that they are going to take most likely, and I hope they don't. Most likely, they're going to take a crappier offer from a crappier team. Um, I do think, for what it's worth, the Heat are going to end up getting them because I think the Heat could give them the best trade package. Supposedly, they can't put Bam in there, but if I'm the Heat, as much as I love Jimmy Butler, see ya, buddy. Like it, it, it just is what it is, you know. I love Jimmy Butler more than anything, and I think he's he's a winner. I mean, he's proven that. But listen, you're talking about Kevin Durant there, and and there's there's untouchable people. But then there's players that it doesn't matter if you're untouchable. Like I will give you, Ke- I'll give you Jimmy Butler for Kevin Durant. I think I would rather take a take a Phoenix offer and build. But I will say it would be very interesting. You know, you say Bam's off limits. If you could get Bam out of bio and Ben Simmons, well, on the he's same he team, knows supposedly you be... can't trade him. Supposedly you can't. Like, the he, Nets can't not... trade for him. The Heat for can him. trade it's, him unless, unless Ben Simmons is also in the deal. It's it's some weird. Uh, okay. You can't cool trade for yesterday. some. You can't have two players on a rookie extensions their first extensions you can't trade for two rookies um, the nba so had the most insane insane like the fact that the fact that bam Adebayo can't yeah, the fact that Adebayo can't be included in this trade is just mind-boggling because otherwise i think it'd be a done deal i think they'd send harrow Adebayo a couple like a couple fucking perimeter players and he'd be and it'd be over but, but now this is this is Jimmy even more Butler. insane to me this is even more insane to me so we're talking about kyrie irving going to the lakers which this is Legion Hoops, which I for Rus- take that for yes, what it's for worth. Russell, for Russell yeah. Westbrook, Taylor Ford, and Tucker in a 2027 first, that's awful. No, like, the that's NBA the worst contract in the league. Up. It's bullshit. Like, all of this stuff is like, it's not real. Like, it's like you're playing, a, like, LeBron is playing, his, his whole career has been on, like, 2K, like, free trade mode. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we could just trade whoever the hell we want for whoever, and it's just automatically going to get accepted. If that gets accepted, like, you might as well just say this league is a joke. Like I will be so pissed off. Like the Kyrie Irving should never Until be the Hawks swapped. Yeah. I Until mean, the Hawks win a championship, the NBA is a joke. It's just, <laughs> I mean, that's mind boggling. I mean, seriously, you might as well be playing NBA 2K if you're going to accept this version of Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving. You really might as well. Like it's not, that is not real basketball. Like, and people will be like, oh, Palinka's a genius. Bro, no, this is a joke. <laughs> this is a joke. The NBA is not literally rich the Nets. Rich yeah, Paul the, is pretty the much NBA, the GM of the Lakers. The NBA has got to be sliding this guy a hundred million, like the Nets. Like here's a hundred mil if you take this trade. Like there's no possible way because it because it would help. It would make the NBA billions for for Kyrie Irving to go to Los Angeles and then so that there has like if that happens, like I will straight up say it. The NBA is rigged. Like it's bullshit. That trade should never be accepted. I do. Uh, <laughs> I do think it's like it's so funny that the Falcons are like the butt of every joke. Like the Falcons are a joke of a franchise, and I still enjoy the NFL. 10 million times more than the NBA. Dude, and I'm excited about this Hawks year, but if you go send Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving, like I'll automatically be pissed again. Like I'll be like, I hate the NBA. And this is why. <laughs> like they just, this is totally rigged. Yeah, it's bad. That's bad. I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't tell me it's rigged. And like, hopefully like that doesn't I don't happen. think that gets accepted. You There's, no There's no way. There's no way. I don't think just, you do. It is I mean, just, it is just, but That's really just when you think about it, like who else is going to take him? Dude, you have guys Austin's like not going to take him. You have guys Dude, like Danny I. Jones. I don't. He opted into his contract. Make him I don't, play. I don't, or don't believe pay this him. notion that uh, teams don't want Kyrie Irving. I don't care if he spurns. I don't buy that either. A, by the way, I, I don't care if he spurns half the NBA. The dude no, that's, is that's box what the NBA. office. When he is on the court, he is box office. No, and see, that's the, a big the media, 
the media is pushing that bullshit. The media is pushing that bullshit to create this narrative. So he gets like sold for nothing to LA. I'm telling you, bro, this is all rigged. It's all a soap opera. Like it's not real life because there's no way to make these decisions. NBA off season, way more entertaining than the regular season. Yeah. So, I mean, but Hey, the Hawks should be jumping in here quick. We stayed quiet. I kind of expect us to stay quiet because we're, we're really on the trade side of things. We don't have a ton of money to make any splashes after the addition of DeJounte Murray. Uh, we might make some splashes after we trade John Collins, which is still in the talks. We got several teams. The four teams we've heard so far, Wizards, Kings, Heat, Jazz. The Wizards are supposedly the most engaged. Uh, like Alex wrote, there's not really anything on the Wizards that does it for me. I mean, Bradley Beal's off limits. There's no way I'm taking Porzingis. Uh, don't want Hachimura. Don't really want, yeah, you know. I don't really want their picks. I mean, maybe if you gave us unprotected first, maybe because they might not make the playoffs. and They're they are they're not going to make the playoffs. Dude, they are – over the tax, and they are not going to make the playoffs. Well, if you gave me unprotected first, doing? we're talking. But, but if, if you gave me unprotected first, like, okay. like if you I, gave could us see ha- I could see Hachimura in an unprotected first. That's really underwhelming to me, but I could see that. But I don't know, though. An unprotected first, me. you never know, though. Because, like, I mean, look how good the Eastern Conference is. Like, there's a good chance they are, like, in the bottom of the barrel. And, like... That lottery. You still got to get lucky with the lottery. I mean, you still we're due get lucky. though. The Hawks are due. We've never won one. We're due. We're fucking due, bro. Like, just let us be due. Like, I'm telling you though. Like, you give me an if we give win Benny Ama, it'll all be worth it. I don't care if we have to trade everybody on this. I roster. think I on a serious. If note, you gave though, us I, two unprotected first, I would take Porzingis back. That's ridiculous to say. No, that's it's ridiculous. not. It would, How is that? Ridiculous? I mean, they just they he's making a billion dollars. Why would they not do that? He's, he's Porzingis sucks. Because yeah, they think they're going like to be the, good. That's why they're trying to get John well, Collins. They're taking John Collins, though. You, there's no way John Collins and Porzingis. That has, Porzingis has to be included in this trade, right? They're not oh, I'll take to a Denny, Denny Abdija. I'll take him. Let's see, on his He's second still, year. Of his I'm, yeah. Honestly, all these, still so John Collins, I, all these John Collins trades, and the reason I think like we haven't gotten any like anywhere in these deals, despite them Nobody going, going on forever. Yeah, like they're just not, they're like lowballing the shit out of us. And to so, be honest, like John, John Collins fits in pretty well with DeJounte Murray. And Trey Young. And I know we talked about it on the other podcast, Alex, but if you can mend fences and convince John Collins, like I think him staying, like like we always say he could be a he could be a third on a championship team. Now he's that third. And and who knows? I mean, he could be a fourth if a guy like OO or DeAndre Hunter takes a step. So I I, I kind of like the idea of keeping him, but it seems unlikely. I just don't my, know why a trade hasn't happened, though. I like John Collins, don't get me wrong, but my main issue is like, dude, what else do you want? You were upset you didn't get a max contract offer. You get the max contract offer. Now you're upset you're not getting any touches. You get more touches. And now you're still complaining. Like, dude, what is the issue? Like, what what do you want? Like, you went to an Eastern Conference Finals last year. Before the DeJounte Murray trade, I mean, I was so against um, the Hawks acquiring DeAndre or Rudy Gobert. I mean, I was like, those that cannot be our second option. But now, like, DeJounte Murray's our second option. I'm all for it. I mean, if in a John Collins trade, uh, I'm all for bringing in Rudy Gobert, well, obviously, I think if, moving if Clint. That, yeah, but yeah, what are you going to do with Clint? You got to trade gotta him. Move to, you have to I mean, the him. Suns are looking for another center, you know. They believe any I think Capella and Phoenix would be really good. Yeah. And you're also talking about a sign and trade here. So it's not like you're, you're, you're not trading, like, uh, what you would. Like, if this, like, let's say, you know, DeAndre Ayton had four years on this deal, like, you're not trading it like you're gonna get give the Suns less like in a sign and trade yeah. than you would in like a, a straight up trade. So Capella, you know Kevin Herter, or people like that. You know maybe you throw in a first round pick or something like that. That could get it done easily and bring Aiden to Atlanta. And they have been connected to Aiden a lot. Uh, I, I I definitely think it makes you better. Um, I don't know if it puts you over the top, but I, it really depends how Dejounte and Trey Trey work together. So I also, think the apparently gotta, just nobody wants DeAndre Aiden. Like, yeah, that's what we keep uh, yeah. hearing. And I, yeah, there's I mean, some, there's some legs to that. One of my buddies is a, is a really big Phoenix Suns fan, and apparently him and Booker used to get into it all the time because Aiden stays up until like five in the morning playing two K, and he's like falling asleep <laughs> in film and like shows up late to practice. Which I mean, he's yeah, twenty, he's I mean, what twenty two, twenty three years old. Like, yeah, I mean, it is funny because like I used to do that shit, but like now, like I, I don't even know where my Xbox court is. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, but like, yeah, I get it. Like, I. 2K video games are addicting, bro. And I know most of the world listen, they really are addicted though. Let's go. If what you is like video games, on? you should check me out on twitch.tv slash can't guard Jake underscore. Yeah. Do you got a prize pick shout out too? 
Yeah, uh, you should use code Cancar Jigs on prize. Pool. There we go. All right, we got the double shield. <laughs> Uh, I fit it in there somewhere. Right, oh, we got the hot. Hey, we got the hot dog eating contest on Prize Picks. If you want to bet on uh, Joey Chestnut to just slug some uh, shaboing boings on uh, on Monday. What is this? What What is this? Uh, just stop tweeting. We got from Trey Young. I- I'll read. Oh it yeah, you can't read. All right, here Thank we go. You. This is a good one. This is a good one about uh, Trey Young. And I love I love the spelling on all these guys. If the Hawks are gonna be successful, Dejounte Murray and John Collins got to be the one two punch. Trey Young needs to realize he's not Steph. He's not Luka. Become a solid number three and not shoot a million times a game. He's not a star. Quicker he realizes that, the better the Hawks will be. Yeah, the guy who led the league in points and assists is not a star. The guy who went to the Eastern Conference Finals in his, what, second year? is not, Or third year? Is third. not a star. Uh, average I, almost I, 30 and 10. Like, come on, bro. I, I went to this guy's page because I was like, okay, this is probably bait, and I don't want to put it on the show if it's just some guy. like Because that's if, if this guy was trolling, that's actually pretty funny. No, he's dead serious. He's on. But not to mention, Trey's also like he's not shooting, you know, thirty five percent from the field and twenty no, percent. Yeah, he, this guy's efficient too. Like he's not only like he's he he's good in every facet. No one, there is not a thing on the offensive end of the court that Trey can't do. Any short, mid range, deep facilitating off ball. I mean, he's a maestro he's the on best, the offensive he's end. The best. He's the best. He's a top five offensive player. There's with no doubt about that. Yeah, I will Arguably say NBA top fans, five. Yeah, NBA fans are the most like they NBA fans watch so much Trey, basketball. Though. It makes no sense. No, I'm saying NBA fans in general are so unintelligent. I've never seen so many people watch so much of a sport and not know anything about it. It's kind of crazy because I don't even watch that much NBA, and I know people that watch. Like they're like on league pass, watching every game every single night, like, and they I have no idea what they're talking about. That much NBA, I don't yeah, know. I don't know how people watch that much NBA. I love watching the Hawks. I love Trey Young. I love this Hawks team, but outside of that, it's like it's such a bore, especially in the regular season. To be fair, I'm the same. Just... I'm the same way with the Braves, but <laughs> oh, I don't watch. Oh, hell no, I don't. I, unless it's the, unless it's like a divisional game that like means something to us. Like I'm not. I'm not watching that shit. No, hell no. Baseball is boring until the playoffs. Like I'll, I'll admit that, but I'm addicted to the Braves. Like the Braves are crack to me. Like they're actual crack cocaine. Like I cannot miss a game. Like it makes me sad if I like don't if I miss a game. Like it, it's crack. Uh, I, so, I, right. I try to catch all 162. Definitely. Oh, we need but to back, do the back. other. Just stop tweeting. Other one, Molly Knight. Um, oh, Molly Knight. I don't this, have this idiot. I don't have it, it pulled it, up, but this is just classic LA sports writers running their mouths about something they have nothing about. They don't know anything about. She says the Braves' mishandling of the Freeman negotiations continue to something the two best teams in the National League. Then literally the next day, Freddie Freeman fires his agent and said that it was his fault. And so, like, L.A. sports writers are just the dumbest people ever. Yeah, I mean, between Plaschke, that one guy. I mean, I, the Dylan stuff they Hernandez say. Dylan or whatever his name yeah. is. I feel like they go to L.A. to, like, write about politics or something, like some liberal <laughs> crap, and they get stuck <laughs> writing about sports. And they just are like, oh, my God, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's like they're complete idiots. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're embarrassments to themselves and their city, but their city embarrasses itself anyway. So LA, yeah, those writers, I mean, it's a, it's a constant. This is what, that's why I like beating the Dodgers was so like refreshing to me. Like, it was just like, ah, like bask in the glory. I mean, anyone that makes fun of Truist Park, which is undoubtedly one of the best, if it's not the best, it's one of the best game experiences from the battery, from the time you could, you show up five hours early, especially during the playoffs and during that World Series run. In the NLCS, he had the gall to make fun of the atmosphere at Truist Park. Like, are you kidding me? There was not a better playoff. I, show me a better playoff atmosphere ever, like in the history of time. Maybe when the Red Sox came back from 3-0 against the Yankees. Like, it, that place was a, I mean, it was a it was spectacle. It was a spectacle. For the World Series, there were 50,000 people outside the stadium. You making fun of that, you're just a total loser. Like, just say I'm a loser. Like, put a loser on the cross of your forehead. You're a loser. I mean, it's just embarrassing to write that crap. It's embarrassing. All right, I'm done with my rant. Uh, they, they, um, I don't think they stand like, I think they think that it like is driving trying getting clits. No, everybody's just shitting on your tweet, dude. Nobody's like, nobody's reading your article. I mean, you're just look like a loser, dude. You just lose credibility, like writing this bullshit. And it's also like, it, it, it's like, oh, I'm from LA. Like the South is such li- hicks. Like, shut the fuck up. All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, let's go. <laughs> You got Let's a lot go of stuff you got to get off your chest today. Is this why we're doing this podcast? Yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, I do. I do. That's Things totally fair. Me off. Uh, but the Braves, the Mets suck too while we're at it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> predictions. Predictions for the NBA. Let's get the let's let's get it. Uh, not for the NBA. For well, actually, fuck it. For the whole NBA. Like just big. Where, where do you think big guys are landing? I already said Durant's going to Miami. 
Uh, I think Irving, he goes Phoenix. Durant, Phoenix. What, what about Kyrie? LA. LA. Oh, I just, so I just think, dude, like we see these things. It's like, I, I oh, agree. Andy it's Davis BS. Wants to go to the it's Lakers. BS, like, but it's, I, I mean, I don't know where else he'd go. I don't know where else he'd go. What do you I agree. think, I'll say Adam? LA. What do you think Adam Silver's doing during during all this? Like, do you think he's Adam like, Silver scheming? Wants to make the yes, he's negotiating under the table scheming? deals. He's negotiating under the table cash deals with franchises to sell their best players away to the Lakers. I mean, it's it's so obvious. It couldn't be more obvious. It's like you don't have to share in the revenue. You can keep yeah. all your revenue yeah, you get, if you make yeah, this trade. You, get, you slash it by twenty percent. Yeah. And this guy who's worth like thirty billion dollars is still like yes. It still doesn't make any sense. All right. Uh, what about what about other big names? Any trades? John Collins. Where does he go? Is he traded? Yes. Or yeah, no? I think so. Uh, uh, shit, I don't know. Uh, the Bulls. How about that? I'm gonna go with the opposite side. I don't think he's gonna get traded. I think he stays. I'm gonna go. Stays. I just don't see him like I would say like Celtics or Heat because I feel like they could give us something in return. But oh, we this is a little breaking news. I actually somebody had just somebody just text me this. Apparently, when uh, the Gallo gets bought out, he's gonna go to the Celtics. Is what it's looking like. That's oh. so sad, dude. Gallo's gonna. I love Gallo's him. Gonna be, he's definitely he's, next, he's definitely gonna torch us one day. He's I the love next him. Al, he's the next Al Horford. Boo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, Kevin Herter, he gets traded. Kevin Herter gets traded to me. Herter gets dealt. Actually, no, I'm going to say he doesn't get no. dealt because we we need a shooter, especially with Dejounte coming over there. He, he can't really shoot. Yeah, I, I like keeping Kevin. We're keeping Kevin. John Collins gets traded though. I'm going to go. He gets traded to the. Hmm. I'm going to go. He gets traded to Phoenix. How about that? All right. Traded for to the Aiden? Suns. No. Not for they Aiden. Give us, they give us like one of those sexy little wings. <laughs> Campaign. I'll take McCall Cam Bridges. Johnson. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'll I'm saying. Cam Bridges. Johnson. Cam Johnson. Yeah. Cam Johnson is dead to me. He sold me out. Of, he sold me out of a five legger. He he had to hit like two threes. And <laughs> yeah. I think he went like so over seven. Never, so he can never play for our team. He's made that's an enemy for life. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take McCall Bridges right. though. Yeah, I would love him. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we get him, but yeah, who cares? We get, a man can dream. Uh, let's talk about what happened last night in the Braves game before we wrap this up. Ian Anderson, absolutely crushed by the Phillies. Guys, it's time for a demotion. I don't think there's any if ands, buts are about it. Uh, I'm kind of surprised it already hasn't happened, so we could bring up an extra reliever, especially with so many guys. Like, I, w- I wouldn't have been surprised if instead of Cruz, I wouldn't have been surprised if Cruz and another guy uh, got got sent to Gwin- or and Anderson got sent to Gwinnett for two guys to come up since we wasted a lot of bullpen guys yesterday. Uh, because that didn't happen, it kind of gives me the feeling they're going to give him at least one more start. But we are getting to the point where with Anderson, he's I mean, dude, his curveball is a joke. He can't throw it. It's getting slugged on at a five ten rate. It's getting hit almost three hundred. Um, I do think some of that's some bad luck. I mean, it's due for some positive regression. But at the same time, I mean, he's got to have a third offering. He can't go more than five innings, even when he's pitching well. The only good starts he has this year have been against like the Cubs and the A's, against very bad teams. Uh, it, it's time for him to go figure it out. Get the Kyle Wright tree mate. He's only 24 years old. Don't need to b- move him to the bullpen. Kyle Muller's pitching lights out. I'd love to see him in Atlanta. Get another shot. Mike Soroka's coming back uh, soon, hopefully. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, it's it's time for an emotion, right? Yeah. Well, Snit said, you know, basically, Grandpa Snit, well, yeah. It's rough outing. Uh, we'll just get him next time. It's been a so rough he, year. He's got a 5.5 yeah. year. No, he literally said just a rough outing. So he's definitely not going down. Like, he's definitely going to get uh, at least one mean, more. He's not going to. No, like no, 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 no. Just not right now. I'm just saying he's going to at least get one more start. There's no way he won't be pulled from that start, I don't think. Um, but, yeah, just go on the farm and don't leave until you have a third offering. Literally, don't come back until you. Or have until you pitch. feel confident. It's like it's like his curveball has like been okay in the past, like to get him by, you know. And it, it, he obviously has no confidence in the pitch right now. He's I know he's throwing it at a twenty percent rate, which actually shocked me because I feel like every time I watch him, I barely ever see the pitch. I think baseball savant, the guy was sleeping during his outings because I rarely ever see him throw a curveball. It said nineteen point eight percent. I was shocked by that. Either way, it's getting crushed. He's clearly not confident in it. He can't control it. Uh, so I, I just think, you know, it's time to, uh, I mean, I just think Moeller, I mean, the guys only has six walks controls his biggest problem. He's throwing 96, 97 from the left side. Like, let's see what he's got, man. Like there's no point in keep throwing Anderson out there. No, no way. Um, he also just doesn't feel like a alpha, 
you know, super confident guy up there. Like Max Fried, I say it all the time. He pitches like a bulldog. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter the situation. Always... He's fighting. He just, Ian Anderson, I mean, he just doesn't look confident up there. He doesn't look like, you know, he believes in his stuff. It, it, it's it's discouraging. Uh, well, not everyone can be Max Fried. Those, those guys are full, uh, few and far between. Uh, Ian Anderson, what we know about this guy, and the reason why you've got to keep him as a starter is because this guy has cojones. This guy's got balls, man. He's got a 1.23 postseason ERA over the last two postseasons. So this guy's got balls. We're going to need him by the time the postseason goes. I just think he's better off figuring it out in AAA. I think if I thought he's better off figuring out here, I would take the L here and there. You know, I, I would take, you know, the few losses. I just think he's better off figuring things out in AAA where there's not as much pressure. Definitely. That's my thing, man, is like I need people to calm down a little bit. Like I was literally like talking about my my stream and some guy was like, so is it time to start thinking about getting rid of Anderson? I'm like, he's 24. Dude, fucking calm down. Like, God. Settle down. Like it's a, you say, get rid of him. You want to kill him? Like, <laughs> <laughs> chill out, dude. It's okay. Like, yeah, he could go to AAA for a little bit. He's like, no, we got we got to get rid of him. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, I mean, he's twenty. People, I, mean, I, th- I people think people talking absolutes. People talking absolutes all the time about the Braves. Somebody uh, said uh, the other day, arguing about Will Smith. They're like, what do you want to DFA him? And I was like, the whole point of the argument was to just get him out of those high leverage situations. Shut up. Shut up. A little DFA. He could still be a setup guy. A little DFA wouldn't. Hey, if you listen, just out of simple principle, if we DFA'd Will Smith, I would be happy. Like, I don't think it's best for the team, but like, God, that guy's pissed me off so much over the last three years that I'd be like, yeah, you know what? I'm good with it. It's another thing, too, is like people just don't learn their lesson. I'm like, we just went through this exact same thing with Kyle Wright. Obviously, Kyle Wright never had the highs of Ian Anderson, but like, have you not learned to just be a little patient with these guys? Like a little bit. Yeah, I mean, dude, these guys. Yeah, he's I mean, literally the way, 24. The way Ian Anderson burst on the scene was kind of ridiculous. Like the guy had a 1.95 ERA in his first year in the COVID year. Coming out of nowhere, it was like shutting down the Yankees. Pitched lights out in the playoffs. Literally three shutout performances in the playoffs before he pitched in game seven of the NLCS and gave up two runs to the Dodgers. Like, come on, man. Like, And then he comes up and he backs it up. He pitches the lights out again. I mean, he was the guy in game six that pitched against the Dodgers. And, yeah, he only went four innings, but it was four scoreless innings. Four scoreless innings against an offense like the Dodgers in the playoffs, that's elite pitching. Um, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not expected to go six, seven innings come the postseason. That's how you play. So this guy, you know, he, he's still got so much potential. And I just want him to go wherever he can best figure it they figure things out, whether that's up here and taking his lumps, whether that's down in AAA. I'm sure the Braves know a lot better than me. I just would kind of like to see Kyle Moeller. I think he could be a really good piece to the team, whether it's out of the bullpen or uh, as, you know, a fifth starter. So I'd like to see him, you know, while he's rolling. But if they think the best thing for Anderson is to take his lumps like and figure it out up here, that's fine too. Because I do think he's a critical piece to this team. Definitely. Especially in October. Yeah, so – uh, we were going to talk about Casey Close being a weirdo, but I'm just going to say he's a weirdo. I don't even really feel like talking about that crap anymore with Freddie. Freddie's gone, guys. Get over it. Uh, that wraps up this special episode of the Sports Talk ATL podcast. We will be back next week. Hopefully, we got a lot of Hawks news. Thank you guys for listening.